Hello, welcome to Arvind Singh Academy. We are discussing uh, limits and derivatives. Today we are going to uh, start derivatives and uh, we will discuss about the derivative, what is the meaning of derivative and how uh, derivative uh, will be uh, in use. So derivatives I am going to discuss. Derivatives. In short, it is also called differentiation. Differentiation. CSL. Right now? So, what is this? To explain this, uh, let me give one example in which you will be able to understand. Um, suppose there is a balance, common balance, uh, which we are using. And uh, in this balance, suppose you have visited somewhere, sometimes in market, and uh, you will see that a common balance in a common balance. Um, there is a two span a uh, one edge just for keeping the goods and another edge for uh, just measuring the weight so weight and this one is uh, say like I can just let me draw this so consider a common balance and in which uh, you have visited somewhere in market if you suppose you are want to purchase some potato and you are keeping the potato here and uh, shopkeeper understood that you will purchase 1 kg and he put a weight of 1 kg here but if you are increasing the weight again here in this side then what shopkeeper will do the gross uh, uh, green grocer um, seller um, increase the weight again here so if you increase the potato again then shopkeeper will increase the grocery seller will increase the weight again so whenever these things are increased this side the weight is also increases it means these to keep balance of any two relationship here each relationship just to equate one item is this side another item is this side and just to equate the relationship so that it will be balanced um, there must be some changes so if there is a change in this side then correspondingly there will be change in that side also so similarly if uh, there is a function fx is equal to say x square and there is a small change in this side y is equal to x square say forget about fx we can say y is equal to fx and fx is defined as x square y is x square let me write and y is x square so if there is a small change in this x then there will be corresponding change in y suppose when x is equal to 1 y is equal to 1 when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 9. So if there is a small change in 1, this side, there will be change 3 in this side. There is a change 1 in this side, there is a change here 5 in this side. So whenever there is a change in x, there will be corresponding change in y, but change is not uniform changes are not uniform whenever there is a small unit change by one this side this will be change three then if again one changes here then there will be change in five so changes are variables at any instant of time what is the exact changes in y when there is a change in x that we need to calculate so whenever there is an x small change in x there will be change in y as well so y is equal to fx this x square is a function of x so we can say here we can assume here let y is equal to fx be any function where fx is x square here let y is equal to fx be any function any function if there is a small change in x if there is a small change change in x change in x say delta x then there will be corresponding change in y that is called delta y there will be 
will be corresponding change in y that is called delta y corresponding change in y say delta y a small change in y so say delta y this change is delta y so y is equal to fx become y plus delta y so y is equal to f is a function and if there is a small change in x x plus delta x then there is a change in delta y as well this is the second equation now if i subtract second minus first subtract in second minus first we have y plus delta y minus y is equal to fx plus delta x minus fx isn't it so y and y cancel so delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x minus fx isn't it now uh, you can understood uh, here delta x changes for delta y so when delta y changes for delta x changes delta x change then delta y will change you can also say like this so whenever there is a change in x as delta x then change in y is delta y when there is a change in one then what will be change delta y by delta x so this is a called rate of change of y with respect to x so we can use it and we can use it as the rate of change of y with respect to x so to define this we need to divide by delta x both the sides so divide delta x by delta x both the sides divide by delta x both the sides both the sides we have we have what delta y upon delta x is equal to fx plus delta x minus fx divided by delta x isn't it now but delta x is very small change in x a small change in x is delta x here is a small change in x is delta x so this is a small change in x delta x a small change in x is delta x so we can say that it is so small taking limit taking limit delta x is so small tends to zero both the sides both the sides right so we have we get what will happen then delta y by limit delta x tends to zero delta y upon delta x is equal to limit delta x tends to zero f x plus delta x minus f x whole divided by delta x you can say like this this is what uh, change in y with respect to x so this is what the definition says about uh, derivative that change in y with respect to x change in y with respect to x and that is described as dy by dx this is described as dy by dx and that is described as dy by dx and therefore dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to zero f x plus delta x minus f x whole divided by delta x and this is the definition of derivative of a function with respect to x so we can have this definition that rate of change of y with respect to x rate of change of y with respect to x this is the called derivative of function derivative of function right now this is defined as rate of change of y with respect to x called rate of this is defined as the rate of change of y change of y with respect to x with respect to x with respect to x means whenever there is a change in x and that is called derivative of y with respect to x this is also called derivative of y of y with respect to x with respect to x you know 
So this is what the definition of dy by dx. I hope you got it. Sometimes people write here uh, instead of delta x they will use h. h tends to 0 fx plus h minus fx upon h. Wherever delta x they can take it at x h right now and we, they will also take the limit h tends to 0. This is what has been written in different books. But uh, as I zoom change in x will be delta x. If there is any increase or decrease in uh, x that would, must should be in terms of x only. And uh, wherever there is change in y then it must be in change terms of y only. So that is why I have written like this. So this is the basic definition. Now let us uh, prove some questions some formulas uh, on the basis of this but before moving ahead uh, we are going to discuss it that uh, where is this before moving ahead let us learn some formulas and some formulas we will prove it also but remember points to remember points or formula to remember you write it directly as a formula formula to remember this. First one is uh, d by dx of any constant function constant is derivative of any constant with respect to x is 0. The second one is d by dx of x to the power n is n x to the power n minus 1 n times x to the power n minus 1 right now. This is what this is the second formula. Similarly, there is some more formula like d by dx of uh, sin x age cos x, and fourth one is d by dx of cos x derivative of cos x with respect to x age minus sin x. Some more formula you can learn here from here that is fourth one d by dx of tan x age x derivative of tan x is sec square x right so derivative of tan x is sec square x this is formula number five okay and now uh, sixth one is d by dx of cortex age minus cosec square x now there will be question number formula number seven that d by dx of sec x age sec x tan x sec x tan x and formula number 8 is d by dx of cosec x age cosec x cortex cosec x age minus cosec x cortex so cos is negative cot is negative and cosec is negative it will be easier to remember that whichever is starting with co their derivative will be negative. Uh, just uh, to remember this, now question number 9, uh, formula number 9 is there that d by dx of log x is 1 by x and 10 is d by dx of e to the power x is e to the power x. One more is 11 d by dx of a to the power x is a to the power x log of a. Here understood basis E. There is also understood basis E. 1 by x. Right now. And one more thing you can remember. That d by dx of root x is 1 by 2 root x. So these are few things so we need to remember. You can memorize it. And you can find it also. That you have to go with this. Now let me prove this one by one that uh, some of them I can prove it and the process by which we can do that that is called first principle. This is what we have discussed already. This is called first principle. So this method is also known as first principle. This method is known as first principle. Principle. This method is called first principle. Right now first principle and or by definition or by definition definition right or by delta method somewhere people say like delta method 
or somewhere people say by a b initio a b initio is the latin word that is from beginning right huh? by a b initio definition or by a b initio so we uh, popularly it is called first principle so we will uh, do all these some of them uh, by first principle and rest of them you can do your own these are called first principle so how to deal with this for example i have to find find the derivative of find the derivative of derivative of constant fx is equal to c from first principle by first principle right now fx is c where c is constant by first principle first principle so we can write here solution this is the first one we can write solution like why the derivative of fx is zero um, because it is constant so here we can write given fx is equal to c so when f die x then c will not change this is the first this is the second isn't it y plus delta y now by definition we can write second minus first by definition we can write limit dy by dx is equal to that is derivative of this is a y dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to zero fx plus delta x minus fx divided by delta x isn't it divided by delta x so we can write it f of this and in that case if i'll write here that the limit delta x tends to zero fx plus delta x is c and fx is also c upon delta x c minus c is zero upon delta x is zero so here uh, limit delta x tends to zero but delta x is not exactly zero now uh, we will write it zero divided by something is zero so here um, this will be limit uh, um, called derivative of a constant is zero so dy by dx is zero and what is y y y is c so therefore d by dx of c where c is zero where c is a constant c is a constant right so this is what now the next one is uh, find derivative of x to the power n now question number two find derivative of x to the power n right with respect to x with respect to x from first principle from first principle principle right we can do that so let us uh, write here solution here uh, y is equal to fx is equal to x to the power n so f x plus delta x is equal to x plus delta x whole to the power n we can write it isn't it so this is first and this is second now dy by definition we can write here therefore by definition definition we can write dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to zero f x plus delta x minus f x divided by delta x isn't it so we can write here that uh, using this therefore dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to zero f x plus delta x is nothing else but x plus delta x whole to the power n minus f x is x to the power n upon delta x so we can write this as limit delta x tends to zero if i took x to the power n common then what will happen one plus delta x by x whole to the power n minus x to the power n if i took x common then it will be also along with 
power n will take out as common. Now we can write it limit delta x tends to 0 and x to the power n can be taken common from whole it will be 1 plus delta x by x whole to the power n minus 1 upon delta x. If I divide it by x and multiply by x then what will happen? You will uh, get it like uh, x to the power this power will be subtracted from the n and now this is 1 plus delta x by x whole to the power n minus 1 and whole divided by delta x by x and limit delta x tends to 0. So limit delta x tends to 0. So this is a formula you remember if you remember this that limit x tends to 0 1 plus x to the power n minus 1 upon x is equal to n isn't it n this is what the formula so you can use it right now so here what will come that will be n so x to the power n minus 1 into n and that will be n x to the power n minus 1 this is what i said earlier if you don't want to use this formula you can use binomial theorem and in binomial theorem 1 plus x to the power n otherwise method 2 method 2 by binomial theorem by binomial expansion theorem theorem 1 plus x to the power n is 1 plus nx plus n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial x square like this plus x to the power n isn't it so we can use it as from here we can use it from there we can use it as limit x delta x tends to 0 x to the power n minus 1 into this can be written as 1 plus del n times of delta x by x 1 plus n times of delta x plus x n times of delta x by x n x x is this plus n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial delta x by x whole square like this finally it will come delta x by x to the power n isn't it and minus 1 whole divided by delta x by x so this one and this one will cancel out isn't it now what will left in that case I can take here n times of delta x by x common from all so it will be limit delta x tends to 0 n times n of delta x by x can be taken common and x to the power n minus 1 is already there then what is left here if I took everything common then one will left here n minus 1 by 2 factorial delta x by x isn't it and plus uh, this will be delta x by x whole to the power n minus 1 earlier it was n and now divided by delta x by x so this will be cancels out and since delta x tends to 0 so this will be 0 by x 0 0 0 everything will be 0 so 1 is left and therefore finally the output will be left here n times of x n to the power minus 1 into 1 plus 0 and that would be n x to the power n minus 1 so you can use any way and you can do that i hope you can do this isn't it now uh, some more question one more question i would like to take up for any of the trigonometric function say find the derivative of find the derivative of sin x of sin x with respect to x from first principle from first principle principle right so in this question um, we will do that here let solution is let y is equal to f and fx is given as sin x so f x plus delta x is nothing as per sin x plus delta x wherever there is an x we can write it delta x this is first and this is second 
Now, by definition, again we'll write here by definition, we will write dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0, fx plus delta x minus fx whole divided by delta x, isn't it? So, we can write here in place of fx plus delta x, what will be that? Therefore, uh, dy by dx is equal to fx limit delta x tends to 0, fx plus delta x is nothing else but sin x plus delta x minus fx is sin x and whole divided by delta x. So, we can write it further sin c minus sin d, sin c minus sin d use the formula that would be 2 cos c plus d by 2 into sin c minus d by 2, isn't it? Whole divided by delta x. Since I am using here that uh, sin c minus sin d. So, what will happen? x x cancels out and there will be a uh, left out like dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 2 cos x plus x is 2x divided by 2 is x plus delta x by 2 will remain and uh, sine delta x by 2 will be there and whole divided by delta x. Now we can we know that that limit delta x tends to 0 sine delta x by 2 if there would be delta x by 2 again, then it will be 1. So, limit delta x tends to 0. We can write 2 cos x plus delta x by 2. And to make it sin delta x by 2, we can write here delta x is already there. By 2, we can divide and by 2, we can multiply. So, this 2 and this 2 will cancel out. Now, using the property that limit the x tends to 0 sin x by x is equal to 1. So, we have here sin x instead of x there is delta x by 2 and delta x by 2. So, it will be 1. Now, what is left? That is uh, left out here that limit delta x tends to 0 cos x plus delta x by 2 into 1. And now, delta x tends to 0. So, what will happen? That will be cos x plus. So, here it will be cos x plus 0 by 2 that is cos x, isn't it? So, what is that? dy by dx is cos x and y is what? y is nothing else but sin x. So, derivative of sin x is cos x and therefore, uh, we can write dy dx of y is sin x, derivative of sin x is cos x. And this is what the formula proved right now. Similarly, you can prove uh, all other one by uh, first principle at your home. This is your homework. And uh, if there is any difficulty, you can ask it also. Now, um, I have given the formula. You need to remember this, isn't it? No need to verify all of them unless and until uh, they have been asked to do so. So, you can memorize them only. Right now. Till then, bye bye. God bless. Keep watching. And if you haven't subscribed, and don't worry about the derivative. This is a very easy topic. You can uh, do it. And uh, here, basic knowledge of derivative is to be uh, discussed, not the deep knowledge, because uh, the deep knowledge of derivative class 12. So, we will discuss there. Here is just elementary idea to be given. And uh, hopefully you will uh, be able to understand it and you will be able to get it so thank you thank you very much god bless